This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In previous exercises, we have seen that dependent views can be created. In this session, we will see what happens when these are extended out to the wider project. As we can see here, we have the parent view open and the dependent views have their extents shown in dotted out in the main view. Right clicking the parent view allows me to apply dependent views to any number of other views of the same type. So let's click apply dependent views and I'm going to scroll down to level 2 power plan and click on OK. Revit takes a while to create those views and if I expand the tree here you can see that we now have three dependent views that are identical in extents to those on level 1. The first thing I need to do with these is rename them. So let's start with level 2 power and we'll call this one west. Rename again. This one's south. And finally, rename north. So I'm going to repeat that. Apply dependent views to level 3 power plan. I could have done this all in one hit, but we would have been sat waiting for the little Windows hamster wheel to keep on turning. So let's take a look at level 3. Open the view. Rename. Level 3. West. Open the view. Rename. Level 3. Power. South. And finally, rename Level 3 Power North. We now have nine views of Levels 1, 2 and 3, three of which, the North ones, the South ones and the West ones, are identical in extents. What happens though if the project lead wants to change the extents of these views? It's very simple you can go and drag the extents of the viewport. But that's adjusting only this one view. It would be so much easier if we could do this to one object and apply it to all the views at the same time. And this is where the scope box becomes very useful. Let's go back to one of the overall plans. From the view tab, I'm going to select the command scope box. Remember to take a look at the options bar. Here we're giving it a name. So I'm going to give it something appropriate for this project. So let's call this North. And a height. So this is creating a box that has a height to it, a three dimensional height. So I'm going to give it something appropriate to the project. And I'm going to create that box in roughly the same place as the dotted lines of the extents of my dependent view north. Now what I can do is select my north plans, go to the properties palette and select the scope box north. Click on Apply. This has now fixed all my north plans so they have exactly the same plan extents. Let's check that by opening up the north plans and one overall plan and tiling the windows. In the overall plan, I'll zoom so that I can see the north and I'll do that for the same in the other views. In the overall plan, if I use the tab key to tab select through so that I can then select the north scope box, 
I can then drag its extents using the grips and as I drag the grips all the views associated are changed. This means consistency throughout your entire project. Let's try that again, this time for the south. From the view tab, select scope box. Oh, and by the way, if you ever get this message come up on screen, please save your project. So, scope box. Here we're going to call this one south. Again, give it a relevant height and draw its extents. Select your south plans and in the properties palette, select your new scope box. And finally, for this exercise, we'll do the same as we did with the north. Tile the windows and see what happens when we make that change. Tab select again to select the scope box. And then use the grips to stretch. As a tip, I've done this exercise with the tiled view so that you can see what's going on. On large projects, it's fairly unwise to have lots of views open, especially if you're manipulating extents. It will actually make the performance slow down. So best practice is to make your adjustment in the overall plan and then go back and check one of the plan views.